the Nintendo Switch Lite. This is Nintendo's attempt to make their already portable gaming system even more portable. They did have to remove a few things in order to shrink it down. Today we're gonna find out how durable this new console from Nintendo really is. Let's get started. The game cartridges for the Nintendo Switch Lite are the same size as the regular Switch and reminiscent of the old school Game Boy cartridges. I remember saving up for a Game Boy Color back when I was 12 or 13 and Link's Awakening was one of my favorite games of all time growing up. It's cool to see that Nintendo has remastered it. Let's see what else comes in the box. If you remember, the normal Nintendo Switch comes with a dock. This dock can output 1080p to a TV or screen while gaming with friends. There is no dock with the Nintendo Lite since it's specifically meant to be a portable console and can't be connected to external displays, so it only has that USB-C charger in the box. It is possible to connect more than one Switch to your Nintendo account, so games you already own for your normal Switch can be downloaded onto the Switch Lite at the same time. Let's start with the scratch test. I've never really tried gaming one-handed before, so let's see how this goes. The numbers one through 10 on this slip of paper indicate different hardness levels on most scale of hardness. Plastic would scratch at level two or three, glass would be a five or six, and sapphire would be a level eight or nine. If the Nintendo Switch Lite screen was made from diamonds, it would of course be a level 10. Since this little guy only cost $200 at launch, we can pretty safely assume that the screen is gonna be made from plastic. And since we visibly see scratches at a level three with deeper grooves at a level four, a plastic screen is confirmed. The downside of a plastic screen is that it scratches relatively easily. Maybe not with coins, but any rough or sharp object will scuff up the screen. The positive side to plastic screens though is that they will never shatter. And I think that's what Nintendo is going for here, longevity. So putting an uncrackable screen on the Nintendo Switch Lite is a good idea. There is a way to get the best of both worlds though, and that's with a tempered glass screen protector. Our video sponsor Dbrand sells a two pack of tempered glass protectors for less than 10 bucks, and they're an exact fit. It's a pretty inexpensive way to get the scratch resistance of glass. And if it ever does crack or shatter, it can be easily replaced. Cause you know, glass is glass and glass can. That's gonna be hard to clean up. It's a worthwhile method of protecting your plastic screen. So I'll put a link down in the description if you need to get some for your switch. The other big design change, besides no docking ability, is that now the side controllers are not detachable. The built-in left side joystick is covered with a very thick rubber material, and it's very well attached and won't be wearing off or falling off on its own. It's a very durable coating. There is a new D-pad that replaces the circular individual buttons. This guy is made from a single color, solid piece of plastic. On the right side, we have more of that super thick rubber covering on the joystick. It's easy to see how thick and well attached it is with little help from my razor blade. It'll take a very long time for this exterior covering to wear off on its own. The circular buttons up here at the top have the letters molded into the button itself. So these letters will never physically wear off, which is pretty smart. The Nintendo Switch Lite comes in three colors, this turquoise blue, the yellow you saw earlier, and the gray color. All of which are made from a solid single colored plastic housing. The SD card slot has a little flap covering the port. This is held in place with a thick rubber hinge. We'll have to see how this connects on the inside when we take this apart, but from the outside, it looks like it's never gonna come off on its own. There is no kickstand this time around since the Joy-Cons are not detachable and pretty much every side, button and surface of the Nintendo Switch Lite is made from plastic, even the power and volume buttons. There is a massive vent for the internal cooling fan. That'll be fun to check out from the inside as well. And it also has a headphone jack. The game cartridge flap is held on with the same thick rubber straps. The back panel of the switch has two more grills, also probably for that internal cooling fan, and both have a paper thin plastic grill, attempting to keep out dust and debris. This console is definitely not water resistant. If you're trying to decide between the switch and the switch light, I think it's all dependent on how and where you like to play games. Personally, when I'm out and about, I hardly ever game. The only time I plink around on Breath of the Wild is when I'm sitting down in front of a TV with my detached Joy-Cons. 
so it's worth it for me to spend the extra $100 for the full-size Nintendo Switch. But if you mostly game on the go, this travel-size $200 Switch Lite might be the better option. Leave a comment down below if you know who this guy is. The screen on the Lite is still 720p, same as the regular Switch, just a tad smaller at 5.5 inches instead of 6.2. And under the heat from my lighter, we can see the little ripples start forming on the melted plastic before the display underneath starts to turn off and go black. This shows that Nintendo is using an LCD panel. The burned pixels recover, however, and do eventually come back on, but the melted front plastic is still melted. The first portable Nintendo Game Boy console was released in 1989, and that thing was a tank. Today, 30 years later, it's time to test the structural build quality of Nintendo's newest portable system. I was worried that the plastic might be fragile, or the screen could pop off, but after a substantial flex from the front, and a very hard flex from the back, there is no permanent damage done to the Switch Lite housing. The switch does flex in both directions, but it's not enough to damage the internal components or crack that LCD screen. Everything is still in place and it's a solid little device. The switch light gets a thumbs up from me. It can handle some aggressive Smash Bros or crazy Mario Kart races and probably any physical abuse kids or kids at heart can throw its direction. I'll put a link for the switch light in the video description for its current pricing, along with some of those tempered glass screen protectors from Dbrand. Now, if you'll excuse me, Link's awakening and I have some catching up to do. Tell me your favorite video game down in the comments, and then come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.